there's a Zen koan that I think is, is kind of cute. But when I think of Zen koans, I, I often think, when you, you hear the exchange between the, the student and the master, I hear uh, the voice of little Kwai Chang Kane from, from the Kung Fu television show, <laughs> talking to Master Po, the, the blind master. So uh, in this one, the student says, Master, what is the most important thing? And the master says, uh, the most important thing is attention. Ah, yes, master, but what is the second most important thing? The second most important thing is attention. <laughs> oh, yes, master, but what is the third most important thing? The third most important thing is attention. What is the common denominator between, uh, among all of these technologies for awakening? It is attention. And there are lots of ways to apply attention, lots of things to uh, apply attention to. Something Shinzen Young said and an offhand remark years ago got me thinking about a way to uh, categorize all of these different uh, practices from different traditions. Shinzen said when he, uh, when things are difficult, he will downshift to mindfulness of the body as kind of first gear. So I took that ball and ran with it. Uh, I think of this as, as being divided into three gears, a kind of three-speed transmission. First gear is looking at the objects of awareness, the changing phenomena of mind and body. So vipassana is first gear. Second gear is to turn the attention around and ask the question, to whom is this happening? So that would be Advaita Vedanta or certain kinds of Zen, Watto. And third gear is to recognize, as, as Tibetan Buddhists might say, the essential nature of mind to recognize what is always already done. This moment is perfect as it is, and you need only recognize that. So that's the three-speed transmission. And one way to approach it is to go to third gear first. If you can see that this moment is perfect as it is, well, I would just look at that. If that's difficult, if you're not able to get traction, then you can downshift to second or first gear. Let's go back to the beginning. What is enlightenment? There's a, there's a 2007 University of Toronto study that used fMRI scans to look at the brains of meditators. And they, they posited two modes of attention, which I, I don't think they made up. I think this goes back to William James at least. Two modes of attention, experiential focus and narrative focus. Experiential focus would be paying attention to something that's going on. You're, you're engaged in what's going on. Uh, Vipassana would be a good way to do that, or even just listening now to the sound of the air conditioner will move your mind into experiential focus. And narrative focus is when we're telling ourselves a story about our experience. These are two very different very, two very different ways that the mind works. Does that mean three minutes are left?
your essential job in order to get enlightened is to change is to change the mode from the narrative which is the default focus to the experience if you do this if you do this consistently you will change the wiring of your brain this is what the the study in question found that the brain structure and functioning change and this is what these fMRI studies continue to find. You can perform neurosurgery on yourself by again and again shifting the mode from the narrative to the experience. This is not easy because the default is the narrative. This is how human beings are set up. Enlightenment is possible. It's a realistic goal for everyone in this room. It's a realistic goal for everyone. I know because it happened to me, at least to the tipping point. I haven't yet gotten to no room for improvement. <laughs> and here's how. Attention. And by the way, this room is filled with people who know how to do this, who know how to teach this. Thank you.